Hey everybody, it's Yami and Chris from Twinfinite, and today we're going to talk about a couple of reasons why Sony is winning this generation. Now, that's not to say that we are uh, automatically fans of Sony. I mean, I am, and I think Jex, you also yep. like, yeah. I like Sony. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's not to say that we don't like Microsoft and Nintendo. Also, it's just very clear that Sony is kind of sweeping this generation and we're going to go over a couple of reasons why that might be. So for me, it was kind of... Uh, Sony came out the, the gates be, uh, with a clear message of what they wanted from the PS4. They kind of brought out the system and it was just essentially played the games the exact same way we'd always been using our systems. Uh, the messaging was clear. There was no kind of complications over uh, the way we'd play used games. It was just really straightforward. And I think that kind of got a lot of people on board right away, especially when you looked at the way Microsoft were doing things. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember like, I, I remember right from the start, I was like, okay, the PS4 is more for me because it's more about the games. That's where the, the main separation came in. Sony kind of really clearly labeled themselves as the system for gamers and the company for gamers. And they really, they really pushed that forward. And you could even see... When they first announced the PS4, they literally just showed games, whereas Microsoft did it the other way around. They showed the console and all of the the cool features first, and then showed the games. I think it was at E3, you know, a few months later down the line, which is the opposite to what Sony did. So I think that's what really kind of gave them a, a push straight out of the gate. Yeah, and like with the Wii U, it was like no contest, right? It was just like nobody wanted well, the Wii U. Yeah, nobody even knew what the Wii U was. They thought it was like an extension of the Wii. And that leads us into our second reason. Uh, there's just way better performance on the PS4, right? I think for a while towards the start, uh, there was they were constantly providing that tiny bit of extra power, which just giving them that slight edge. Uh, you, you saw in a lot of the graphics comparisons, it's always that tiny bit of extra detail. And that was, I think, mainly because the Xbox One was, at the start, putting its power into the Kinect. And that kind of uh, balanced out when Phil Spencer came in, kind of threw the Kinect away, uh, and just focused on uh, rivaling... Uh, Sony's PS4 in terms of uh, visual power but then the Pro has kind of reopened that gap which I find really interesting and then Microsoft are going to kind of close it down again with the Scorpio. Yeah it's like constantly a game of catch up almost. Gears of War was like beautiful it was gorgeous. At some points I would just stop and like stare at the crazy hurricanes that were happening in the background because they were so gorgeous. Oh yeah yeah. But like Uncharted 4 and Horizon and all these incredibly beautiful games they I don't know, they blow it out of the water, in in my opinion. I played Horizon on the Pro and it's it's literally the best the best experience I've uh, like I've seen. It just every single like frame just looks perfect. That kind of moves us into the third one, which is uh, Sony's really gone in with their exclusives on the PS4 and they've had a really solid lineup. And I think if you even if you look at e, from E3 to 2015, that's really started to show with the announcements that they've been making as well. So you've got like the Final Fantasy VII remake where everyone lost their mind. Shenmue 3, <laughs> everyone lost their mind. Spider-Man, Yami lost her mind. Yeah, it was like a religious experience. Yeah. And then they had Crash 2, which kind of really showed to me that they're listening to what fans want. And, you know, even if it's not right in front, you know, a real easy possibility for them to bring something to the PS4, they're trying to work with third parties to get those games that fans want and bring them to the system. I've always felt that PlayStation exclusives gear more towards me in general like i always love way more exclusives that sony is dishing out i do love some of microsoft's as well but like all right listen persona 5 is on ps4 you know and it's not on xbox one and that's a huge loss for microsoft i think sony's also been kind of clever with bringing something for everyone uh so you had things like ratchet and clank which you loved when you reviewed oh, so and then good. you've got things like until dawn oh, that's just and also two good. completely different things but the two amazing games that they brought back and you know brought to the ps4 anyway and it, it makes the console more appealing for more people because i think when you look at the xbox as well you've got like halo uh gears forza as well and they're all quite, and like dead rising and they're all quite mature titles i mean racing anyone can get into but there's always quite a a niche audience for it and i think with the ps4 that the range of exclusive the exclusives they've got brings more people in and i think the, the quality as well has been kind of really consistent you've seen the likes of recall uh disappointed on what people really thought it was going to be but things like horizon persona they've really they've just been consistently you know really high quality really you know game of the year contenders or you know being up there anyway and so i think it's really been impressive to see just how Sony have come out of the gate with their exclusives for the PS4. And our fourth reason is because of the third-party publishers. Now, PS4, uh, Sony, they they kind of get a lot of things first, right? It's like kind of like on PS4 first, on Sony first. Yeah. 
especially with uh, big big titles like Call of Duty and Destiny. Yeah, for sure. I think that's been a real big pull because uh, Call of Duty is, you know, it may you may say it's declining in popularity, but it's still got a huge player base. You know, th- like hundreds of thousands of people still buy every year, and being able to get those maps a month early on PS4 and Destiny getting these exclusive D- the exclusive DLC and limited edition hardware it's, it's really appealing for those hardcore fans that you know that really matters to but it's not it's not just the DLC that they've been them working on it's it's building partnerships with third party uh, publishers as well and developers so you saw that with uh, Resident Evil's campaign as a whole PSVR exclusive you know it's pretty huge especially when Oculus and and Vive still don't have it yet and I don't think there's a date on that yet and it also doubles up as a hilarious spectator sport too because it's you know scary as hell <laughs> and speaking of PSVR final reason is of course VR now it's very divisive i myself don't care for vr games i don't care for vr i don't think it's the future of gaming but you can't deny that it is an aspect of gaming that a lot of people like and are having a lot of fun with yeah for sure i mean i'm the complete opposite of you i really like vr Uh, every time i get into a game i'm kind of blown away by just how immersive it is compared to just playing on a tv Uh, and i think because it's such a different way to experience games and because of the way that mainstream uh, press is really caught onto it as well it adds a whole new level of immersion uh and i think sony's been really smart of getting involved in this platform from the very start i am really really interested in the hololens uh, but, but lord knows when that's going to come out and i don't know if nintendo has been working on any vr stuff there's been like rumblings of it but uh, sony clearly got the head start on vr as you said yeah microsoft they, they could be bringing HoloLens, well, they are bringing HoloLens and something potentially Oculus related to the Scorpio, but I suppose that's probably going to come down to the whole lawsuit thing with those now anyway. But that's going to be, you know, an, another year after the PSVR released at the very least, if it re- launches alongside the Scorpio, which we assume is going to come in, what, November time? And this is kind of an aside, but I kind of figure that the HoloLens isn't going to be exactly what they showed, because what they showed was super rough draft, right? But it seemed too good to be true. Like, it's like, you could be a god and look at upon the Minecraft <laughs> world. And, and I was like, oh, that sounds so awesome for me, but I don't know if you'll do it. Even if they can do it, though, I think they've then got the problem with the price point, because that that's expensive tech. And Sony really nailed it by coming in with a premium VR headset at the bottom of the of, you know the three prices. So I think that gives them a really big appeal because you can pick up a PS4 Pro and a PSVR and probably get a bunch of games with it as well from like GameStop for like $700, which is probably around the same price as just a Vive on its own before you factor in the PC. So it really puts them ahead as well there. It's clearly something that they just like totally wrecked in. Yeah. This affordable headset that... Uh, we'll give you VR first on consoles for sure. Yeah, Shuhei said he was, you know, Sony was treating this like a, a the PS One launch all over again. I think that really shows with the way they really brought out games for it as well. There's been a, a solid stream of games, and I think they're gonna. Wa- I'm hoping anyway they'll impress us again w- with more titles at E3. Yeah, I'm really excited, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Jex, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you very much, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.